For more than 25 years, I have walked up this brick sidewalk to my office in this beautiful Victorian building. The home was one of about a dozen built by Vanderbilt University at its founding in 1875 for faculty members and their families, and one of only two that remain on the campus today. I find myself consistently drawn to the story of a little girl whose family first occupied the house and who later was among a small group of women who attended classes at Vanderbilt in the early days of the university's history. After her graduation in 1896, she was the first woman hired by the university. Her name is Stella Vaughn, and I want to share some of Stella's story with you. When hired in 1896, Stella was considered the unofficial Dean of Women, but her appointment was officially that of women's PE coach. A remarkable athlete, Stella Vaughn taught the women to play basketball, a game only invented five years previously, and they played competitively against local girls' preparatory schools. Her colleagues, all of whom were male, were opposed to Stella's actions as they felt girls playing basketball would stain the university's name. Stella had a strong voice, though, and was able to strike a compromise. Women could play, but men couldn't watch. However, in the first game played, a male reporter from the student newspaper hid in the gym, and his stealth reporting resulted in the following account of the game. After the doors and windows had been barred and locked and a guard placed at each, time was called for the game to begin. Now, I thought, we will see some scratching and hair pulling and hear a half dozen screams. I was not deceived. They showed that they were still girls. The local Nashville newspaper relying on other eyewitness accounts, wrote, The contest is said to have been one of spirit, evidenced by the sunny locks found on the floor later by the janitor. There were no broken bones, black eyes, or scratched faces reported. Although that first game was played behind locked doors, Stella Vaughn continued to open doors for women throughout her long association with the university, which ended at her death in 1960, at which time the local newspaper reported, the grand old lady of Vanderbilt University is gone.